Hey, I'm Steve Krenz for Guitar Gathering. Welcome to this guitar workout on Travis picking. And we're just gonna get started with Travis picking. This is the entry level. So if you just are interested in this style, maybe with Ch you've listened to some Chet Atkins, you've listened to a little bit of Merle Travis, you, maybe some Tom Bresch, and you like that sort of style. <laughs> that sort of a style, then we're gonna get started learning very fundamental things to get you started. Now there's a PDF that goes along with this lesson. The link is in the um, YouTube description down below and you can link to that and that will take you to our guitargathering.com which you can download the PDF for this workout. So if you have your guitar with you, then let's go ahead and get started. Travis picking, what is that? Well, Travis picking, that was, that was kind of started by Merle Travis, and uh, it is a style of picking where you're using your thumb to hit alternating bass notes and do other things with it. Where we're going with all of this is to get you enough skill to where you can play the old Travis picking favorite freight train. Okay, so that's, that's kind of a, a great starting song in Travis Picking. So that's kind of where we're trying to go, is get enough skills to be able to do that. But where it all starts, the engine for Travis Picking is your thumb. So I'm gonna be using a thumb pick. <clears throat> what I'm using is a Dunlop. Uh, this is a medium. Actually, it's a little tight on me. I probably should be using a large. National puts out some good thumb picks as well. This one, uh, I, I like it, grips me. Uh, grips my thumb really uh, nice and strong, and I like that. So you can use your just your regular thumb without a thumb pick if you would like to do that. Um, with a thumb pick, you don't have to quite angle your hand as much as you would as if you were playing classical or a fingerstyle approach. One of the things that we're going to learn first is some finger independent stuff. So let, grab your guitar. So and let's look at the PDF. We're going to talk about proper Travis picking technique, finger independence, and then we're also gonna be playing chords on the sixth, the fifth, and the fourth string, which those were the, are where the bass is alternating. So look over at page two, and we'll start doing some of these exercises. Now this is gonna be foundational. If you've had Travis picking before, then this is probably not the place for you. But if you're looking at getting into this style, we're gonna talk about the fundamentals and go real slow with it. Take a look at page two. The, the engine for all of this, Travis picking, is the thumb. So we're going to talk a lot about what the thumb is going. So let's look at what's happening with our thumb. We want to get our thumb to play the bass notes. Okay, so if I'm on a, a let's say a C chord, I've got my third finger on this C right there. And at this point, what I want you to do is try and hit that C and then if you want to the next step is to is to try and mute down with the fleshy part of your palm just over that bridge just slightly so you've got kind of a good thumpy muted sound if you, if you get too much we don't have it we don't get the note if you don't have enough then you just start getting the the note ringing freely. So you want it just a little bit over, over the string there, the fifth string. See if you can hit that C on the fifth string, third fret, get a good solid sound. Now, with Travis picking, we alternate between the thumb, or excuse me, between the root and the fifth, like a tuba would play in a, in a, in a brass band. Root, fifth, root, fifth, just kind of going back and forth between those. As we get more developed, we'll do some other notes too. But we're going to start with the root and the fifth. So there's the root in the key of C. The fifth would be the G. Okay, and it's underneath that. So I hit the third finger on the fifth string is the C. 
The third finger on the sixth string is the G. So take a look at that first line on page two and see if you can play that with me. I've got the tab written there. I want you to form the chord even though we're not playing the full chord yet, okay? So here we go. Let's see if we can play this together. Try and get that muted sound. We're going to spend a good while trying to get the right sound. One, two, starts on a C, go. C, 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 then the next measure. Now we start alternating. Don't look at your hands. There you go. Try it one more time. One, two, are ready, go. Three, four, try and keep your eyes on the music. Then we start alternating. Th root, fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth, root, fifth, root. Good. We're, we're on fifth string type chords. C's, A's, uh, the A family, the C, C7, B, B7, B minor. All of those would work with this sort of a pattern. Take a look at the next line. So let's switch to an A minor. We're going to do the same thing. Now here, I'm not, I don't have to adjust my third finger. The strings are already open for these, okay? So if I form an A minor, I know we're not playing an A minor, we're just forming it. See if we can get this. We have an open A and then eventually we're going to have an open E too. Ready, two, number two, go. Try and get that proper muted sound. Now we start alternating, and. Slow and controlled, okay? That was with an A minor sort of a shape, okay? What if I have a B7 sort of a shape, like in the third line? Okay, well how I do this, now my second finger is gonna go back and forth. So you notice the root and the fifth are always at the same fret, either third fret, second fret, open, Okay? They're always right underneath each other when it's a fifth string root. It's a fifth string root. So let's form this B7. We're going to do this one. This is the third line. So now our second finger is going to be going back and forth. One, two, third line, ready, go. Get the Work on getting a good sound. You go. You don't want it too far back. You don't want it too far up to where you're muting it the, com the, the sound completely away. Now, is it a good idea um, to work with a metronome? Yes, it's always a good idea to work with a metronome. Once you get these patterns down, then yeah, put a metronome on. Don't worry about speed. It's not about speed. It's about control. So try to get right along with the metronome. If I had a metronome here, and I've got a little my phone here, and I use a little app that's called Metro Timer. And uh, I'm going to put it, let's see, boom, 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 boom. That's at 89 beats per minute. Right there. This is what my app looks like. Okay. And so if I did, let's say number three again with the B7. One, two, ready, go. To get it right with the click. There you go. So yes, is it a good idea to work with a metronome? It's always a good idea to work with a metronome. But again, don't worry about speed. I, I need to try and get it faster and faster. No, 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 no. Not about speed. Take a look at the fourth one, okay? So now let's mix it up. We've done some in C. We've done some in A. We've done some in B. Now we're just going to put them all together. So we're going to be jumping between chords and we're doing this alternating bass, okay? So take a look at the third one. Third finger starts it, then the open. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, go. Fourth line, down. Form the chord. I know you're not playing it. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Hey, let's let's uh, let's use our metronome as well. We're here. I've got it at 84 beats per minute right now. One, two, ready, go. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you've done this before, then this is going to be really easy. If you have not, it's worth spending. Don't get bored with this kind of level of, of detail on it. We've, this is the, fun, the fundamentals, the foundation. If we don't get this right, you're never going to be able to do anything on top of this. So you've got to get this motion right. Take a look at the next page. Okay, so we've done it on roots on the fifth string, C chords, B chords, A chords. Now we're going to do it with roots on the sixth string. Okay, so now the fifth is now higher instead of lower. So here's the, if we did it like on a G chord, the fifth of a G chord is the D, but there's not one beneath it, so we have to go high. So if I do it on an open G, that D is on the third, excuse me, fourth string open. So we start off with our third finger on the low G. We'll do that for a while. We'll just repeat that measure for a while. And then we'll go between the G, skipping the fifth string, hitting the fourth, then back to the sixth. So let's slow it down. Let me slow my metronome down here a little bit. Form that G chord. We're just gonna do that first measure a few times. One, two, ready, G. Try and get right with the click. Okay, now let's start alternating between G and that fourth string open D to alternate now. Just keep alternating. Try and get a good sound out of it. Okay, freeze. Now we're gonna add another note in there. We're gonna go from root to the up to the D and then to the fifth string B and then back to the D. So we're having a pattern that sounds like this. So my hand down here isn't changing at all. He's still formed in the chord, but I'm just going sixth string, fifth string, excuse me, sixth string, fourth string, fifth string, fourth string, sixth string. So let's do that pattern for a while. Two, this is the third measure. We're gonna repeat that pattern. One, two, ready, go. Sixth, fourth, fifth, fourth, sixth, fourth, fifth, fourth. There you go. Work on getting the right sound. Don't get bored with this. Get the right sound. Control what's going on. Don't half learn it, nail it every time. Okay, so that works with open uh, uh, permutations of the G. What if I did a bar version of the G? So let's form a big bar version of the G. Well, now the, the root is on the first string, or excuse me, the first uh, finger at the third fret, sixth string, okay? And then the fifth string uh, fifth fret, third finger, that is the D. So now things have switched places, okay? That's what we're doing. So we're holding this bar G down here, okay? And we're just going between the root and the fifth, but now it's on the sixth and the fifth string. Got it? See what's happening there? It's different from the other ones. Okay, all right, so start back at the beginning. We're gonna go through all five uh, or four permutations of these. We'll repeat each of these twice, okay? So we start off with an open G. One, two, ready, go. Do it again. And then we're gonna go between the sixth and the fourth string. Ready, go. There you go, there you go. Now we're gonna go alternate, add that B in there, go. Good. Now let's do the bar, root and fifth there. There you go. See how that works? All right. Slowly, my sneakiness, I'm taking you through all of these permutations. Slight little variations. Third finger here, second finger there, open there. Uh, first and third, first and second, first open, second. All of this is little permutations that you're gonna need when we start getting in, in there, okay?
take a look at the next one, the second line on page three. Let's work on an F chord. Okay, this is basically like we did before. Okay, so we'll just go through this one pretty quick. This is the second line of page three. A one, a two, a ready, a go. F, F first finger, repeat it. Now the root and the fifth on the first and third. Okay, now look at the next measure where we do the octave. First, fourth string, fifth string, fourth string, sixth string, fourth, fifth, fourth, first finger, pinky, third finger, okay, there you go. Uh, I've got a little bit of a mistake in the tab right there, I'll fix that. Um, on the third line, let's go to uh, an E, some E chords, so, you know, E minor, E major, all that E family, okay? There I'm back open again, so how does this work when I'm doing an E? Open sixth, second fret, fifth string is the fifth there. So let's do the third line, one, two, ready, go. We do it again. Now root and fifth, root and fifth, go. Form that E minor chord. And now the third one, octave, fifth, up, back down. Hey, do it faster. Don't look, don't look at your hands. How fast can you go? There you go. And that's a little bit how, how we would do that. Okay, so now let's mix them up. On the bottom of page three, we're gonna mix up this type. We've got our open type that we did, root, or root, and then the fourth string, fifth, okay? And then we've got the open ones. We've got the muted, uh, the, the uh, excuse me, the bar ones, and then back to the open. So let's, let's play the fourth line. One, two, a little bit slower, G, B, G, now to an open E. F, open E. See how the, that pattern changed there on that, on that fourth measure? Okay, good. So that's a, another, I've taken you through all of the combinations that you're gonna find on the sixth string root chords. Flip the page, flip the page. All right. Now, on the fourth string chords, well, that's the D family there, D minor, D7, D major, things like that. So let's just do, uh, uh, since there's not a whole bunch of these, there's just the D family, so let's just form a D chord. Now, here's the deal with this. I've got a D, and then just like the C chords, the fifth is underneath, D, A, D, A, but there's also an A on the third string. So we'll use that in the third measure. So here we go. Start on the D first. This is the top exercise, page four, first measure. Let's just go back and forth. Ready, go. Now alternate them, second bar. Third bar. D, upper A, lower A. doing that one for a while. Now, one of the questions that I'm, I'm watching that's coming by is asking about rest strokes and free strokes, which is a classical guitar uh, uh, terminology for talking about are you, are you playing into the next string? Like when I play this D, I'm, my pick is actually hit touching the third string underneath it. Okay, that's rest stroke. It rests into the next string and holds it there. That's rest stroke. Free stroke is where I'm not doing that. I'm just going back and forth between the two. 
At this point, I was probably doing a little bit more rest strokes than I was free strokes. Is there a right way or wrong way? Not particularly. You're going to use them both in, in, in all that. Probably more free than, than rest strokes, though. Um, now, one, one note here. When Tommy Emanuel teaches this, he teaches bracing. That It's a good idea to just take that pinky and just plant it somewhere on your guitar. I don't care where. I don't care how you do it. Uh, for me, I typically uh, just cup it underneath the first string and just kind of rub the bottom of that first string as I'm playing. Other people just take that string and plant it there so that our, our hand can be stable as a point of reference. That sort of a feel to it, okay? Um, so play around with that. Take a look at the next one. Page four, that was all of that was step one. Step one, just getting your hands used to going back and forth, okay? Now, I know that was long and boring and all that sort of stuff. Here's what we did educationally. We went through every combination of root and fifth on the fifth string, sixth string, and fourth string, which by golly is gonna be about 95% of the chords you're ever gonna play in this style. You've already learned every finger combination for that, okay? That's why these are important, okay? Take a look at the next one. Let's add one more little concept to this, okay? One more concept. All right, we've got our bass line happening. Now let's add something. Hey, my son used to juggle, okay? And he would, he would have all of his balls and he'd be juggling. Now, here's the secret when you're juggling, okay? So you're juggling, but as you add one more thing to it, it, it really changes everything but because it changes the pattern. So that's why when we add just these other notes in here, then suddenly our pattern has changed and it gets more complicated. So we're gonna slowly, level by level, add another ball as you're juggling, okay? So here's, this, here's the next one we're gonna throw at you, okay? We're gonna add playing the rest of the chord my first finger, second finger, and third finger are playing the third, second, and first strings. And my thumb is going to still do what he needs to do. So he's still going back and forth. But this time I'm just going to play these notes at the beginning of each measure. So it should sound like this. This would be the second line on page four. Two, three, four. We've added a little bit of complexity, okay? A little bit of complexity to it. So let's take, let's give you, let's give you a, a chance to digest that. So let's go super slow and just get that move first. One, two, ready, and. Hit them all together. Then keep the C going. Just do that for a while. Don't worry about doing the whole thing. Just keep doing that. So the bass note is muted, but the upper strings are ringing out clearly. Now let's see if we can alternate. Do that again, do that again. Let's double the notes up. Do it again. Do it again. Okay, now let's play all of that second line just right, right after each other, okay? Keep your eyes on the music. One, two, already, a go. One, two, three, all of them, all of them together. It's about control, control. Now alternate the bass. Chord again here. Let's do that exercise again. Still muting. Alternate the bass. There you go. There you go. Look at the next line. Okay. Another member of the A family, we're going to do, instead of A minor, which we did in the other one, we're going to do an A major. 
types. A major shape, second finger, third finger, and a pinky down here, okay? Same sort of an exercise, okay? Now, I'll give you a hint, nothing changes with this hand. This is the same pattern that we did just a second ago. The only thing changes over here. So sometimes mentally, oh my goodness, the chord changes. Ah, nothing actually happened down here. The only thing that changed was up here. Here we go, third line down. Here we go, on that A, one, two, uh, you know what to do. Sorry, I'll do it right this time. One, two, already together. Okay, let's get that going again, just with the quarter notes in the bass. One, two, just the first measure a couple times, and do that A major again. Just, just do that again. Do that A major again. Hey, let's do A minor. Ready, same pattern. Hey, let's alternate the bass on an A minor. Go. Sorry. There we go. What about an A seventh? Good, there you go. Take a look at the next one. Okay, so we're gonna go through a C, an A minor, a B seventh, a C seventh, and then look, oh my goodness, look at that uh, fifth bar. We're gonna go through that alternate bass pattern. So instead of just going root, fifth, root, fifth, we're going root, third, fifth, third. There you go. While holding the chord, oh my goodness, we're throwing extra juggling balls at you. Here we go, one, two, slow, last line, four, go. Just that first measure a few times. Do it again, that first measure. Let's go to the A minor now. A minor. Do it again. Now a B seventh. B seventh. Just changing chords. Second finger's going up and down. B seventh again. Now a C seven. Hit that chord again. Do it again. Okay, let's just stay there for a second. Okay, and in a second we're gonna jump to that fourth fifth bar and change the bass pattern. Ready and go end. Keep going. stop. There you go. Okay. Woo! A lot of changes. We're, now we're going to play that, that exercise there. We're going to repeat each measure just two times and play it right front to back. Okay. This is the last exercise on page four. Okay. Each measure twice. One, two, C, ready, go. Do it again. A minor. B7. Can you do a B7? Sorry. There you go. C7 with extra chords. Next measure with the alternate bass line. There you go. There you go. Ooh. We're, we're going up a notch, okay? Look at the page five, okay? Let's look at this last exercise on page five. So we've done it with fifth string chords, and now we're gonna do it on a sixth string chord, okay? We start out with an open G, same concept, okay? Then we start, look at this next measure, we go. Sixth string, fourth string, sixth string, fourth string. Let's switch to a G seventh in the third bar. 
fifth string, fourth string, sixth, fourth, fifth, fourth. And then to get our bar shape in there, we're gonna go G minor. Okay, so let's just get this going. Okay, starts on an open G. We'll just repeat each measure for a few times and then I'll tell you to move on. Okay, we're going from the sixth string to the fourth string. Now we're jumping that fifth string. One, two, already, a go. Do it again, do it again, do it again, and. Start alternating the bass between the G and the D. Go, second measure. Switch the G7th on the alternating bass pattern. Go. There you go. Fifth string, fourth string, sixth string. Let's go to the minor form. There you go, I'll let your hand rest here for a second. All right, so we've gone through kind of just the first little layer of this. And we've gone through every combination of, of uh, alternating uh, roots and fifths that you're gonna really come across. Everyone on the sixth, everyone on the fifth, everyone on the fourth. So you can jump around through different chords. I would encourage you to just take these same concepts, maybe flip through some, you know, just write out different chord progressions, a G to an E minor, to a C, to a D. Maybe a, then a next chord would be like a C to an A minor, to an F, to a G. Maybe a D to a B minor, to a G, to an A seventh. Just write out a few different progressions try and do these concepts with that alternating bass with them. And each one of them is slightly different, so you have to kind of figure out the alternating bass for each chord. Now, I know it seems like, oh, Steve, there's, there's 30 of them. Well, when you actually get down to it, there's really only about six or seven different ways that you do this, but you do need practice doing all of that. So I'd encourage you to do that. Work with a metronome. It's not about speed, it's about control, so work with a metronome so you can slow it down. If I can't play it as fast as the metronome's going, what do you do? Slow it down! It's, a, it's an easy fix. Just slow that metronome down, and that will help you get that. It takes time. It takes time. We're going to get the next level after these chords is to start uh, syncopating, where we're doing things like... Next level after that, we start doing things like the. So we're just, we're, we're, we're heading down the road to get where we want to go with Freight Train. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned some things with it. it, it just work with it a few, a few days and you will get this. And you'll be, have a good foundation for where we're going the next time that we get together on this. Hey, I'm Steve Krenz for Guitar Gathering. Keep up the great work and we will see you next time.